Walking the streets of Webster Grove in the early hours of the morning, it's quiet. The only sound is the buzzing of the streetlights and my own footsteps. But somewhere, someone has already started making dough and timbering a wood oven. I don't know if it's my intuition or my sense of smell. I can't help but feel drawn towards a corner storefront. It's 4.30 in the morning here at Webster Grove. I mean, we are literally the only ones in town right now. The aroma coming from the Balkan treat box, unbelievable. And they're already working away. I'm gonna have to go in there and check it out. As a chef, I need to stay curious in order to evolve. For me, that means looking beyond a great meal to learn more about who made it and what inspires them to cook. Every great city has great food. I'm going on a journey around the world right here in St. Louis to find good food and experience other cultures. I'm on a quest to find passionate chefs who cooks from the heart because food is love. It's gonna be delicious. Food is love. Love your food. Long before the sun crest, the famous St. Louis skyline, they are hard at work here. Lauren and Ed O'Nalik own and operate the trending lunch spot, the Balkan Treat Box. They have created a menu that encapsulates the best parts of street foods from the Balkans. These two spend their early mornings making and weighing out dough. Then baking it in a wood oven they built to replicate the bread of Edo's motherland, the former Yugoslavia. But the story of how the Balkan treat box came to be is about more than just bread. In fact, you might even say it's a love story. It's the story of how Lauren, a St. Louis native with a diverse culinary background, met Ido, a Bosnian immigrant to St. Louis, and how together they gave birth to a growing phenomenon known as the Balkan treat box. Thank you. Okay. My Viking friend. <laughs> no, this, this is like perfect. This is just how my childhood right here, the dough early in the morning. The bread is the heart and the soul of what you're doing, right? Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Now say again how you say this, somos? Somo. Somo? Somun. Somun. Yeah. It's a Turkish last name. Written records they date back to the 1500s. They say that it was made in Sarajevo by a man named Somun. So purpose for it was for it to be baked quick to feed the masses. And fittingly, that's what they do here. They feed the masses. But how did Soman, from half around the world, come to find its way here in St. Louis? Bosnians like Ido, driven from their country during breakup of Yugoslavia, started relocating to St. Louis in the 90s. For me, the best stuff to eat is a hot Soman and some kaimak. It's something like comforting about buying fresh bread yeah. that day. I was uh, 10 years old when the war began. I do sometimes miss my home. The community here is pretty big. I mean, yeah, up to 70,000 Bosnians in St. Louis. They started coming in 93, a few families, you know, and then throughout the 90s up into like 2000, 2001. I think 98 was the largest influx. Fast forward to today, the St. Louis neighborhood of Bevo, it's known as Little Bosnia. You know what, I wonder if we can go into the Bosnian Chamber of Commerce, if there's somebody there. This is so cool, you know, we are exploring 
Bosnian food uh, in St. Louis. There is so much to see here. Not only exploring the food, you know, go and experience a different culture. There is a lot of Bosnians living here. The community is referred to as Little Bosnia. This is a, a replica of a fountain there is in Sarajevo. It's called a Sibila. In fact, when they dedicated this in 2013, the Bosnian president at the time came here to the groundbreaking. That speaks to the community of Bosnians. We have here in St. Louis the biggest community outside of Bosnia. This shows if there is anywhere to find good Bosnian cuisine outside of Bosnia, it would be right here in St. Louis. A phone call to our friend Ido, and he arranged for us to meet his former employer and pillar of the Bosnian community to learn more about the Sibyl and how so many Bosnians came to live here. People of, of, of Bosnian community give the money to build that monument. It's exact replica of Sebil in Sarajevo. Okay. So that this was our gift to the city of St. Louis for their hospitality to us for 250th birthday. This is Sadek, owner of Taft Street Restaurant, a Bosnian refugee who, like many others, built a new life in St. Louis after leaving his home country in the aftermath of political breakdown and war. We came with nothing. Yeah. I have a 58 bucks, 58 US dollars in, when I would come in the United States. I coming from a town that have about 2,200 people in 1991. Right now, uh, maybe 180. 180? We have uh, three times more houses than people. A lot of young people die. Yeah. A lot of young people die. Innocent, a lot of lives destroyed. When they left my house, they took everything. It was just shell. Windows, doors, lights, even wires for the lights. Kindness of American people on the beginning, that they took time and effort to help us, to show us new way, because life in America is different than anywhere else. How, but how, how come this particular area? What, what made a Bosnian come here? This used to be a German part of the city. A lot of Germans live here, but they're getting old. It was very affordable to buy properties here, and then we come, and uh, there was a lot of construction, Bosnian construction workers, that they are fixing houses for us, and we start moving here. Mill, it's European thing, so yeah. we were kind of connected with all of that. Very fortunate to have worked with for Sadek. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we, we kind of have an old same story. I was looking for a worker, and a friend of mine said, hey, there is a kid. He was 21, 22. Yeah. Uh, from Sarajevo, he's looking for work. And they brought him here, and he started. And uh, then later on, uh, Lauren was uh, my salesman. And they started seeing each other. So it's your fault. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you come to America? You know how it is when you meet a woman, things change, right? You, you think you have something going on and you, you have a plan and then you meet the woman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, my plan was just to check everything out and have some fun and then I, go back yeah, home. I kind of know what your plan was. <laughs> and yeah, you had the same plan. I <laughs> uh, came 2004. We met in 2006, yeah. She always talked about owning a place, right? She wanted to have a, like a cafe, you know? Yeah. Like we, she would sell sandwiches and stuff. She was a chef. She missed the kitchen. She, she, she was very much interested in making Bosnian food. She was cooking with my aunt here, my other aunt here, and uncle. Then we started playing with the idea to open a place where we serve foods from back home. We thought that uh, with the right approach, we can we, we can gain a following. Well, I'll say you gained a bit big following. So we decided for her to go back to Bosnia to experience the culture, you know, to e eat the food. She went there. She stayed with my with my parents. But had she met your parents before that? No. Or? So that was the first time she met your parents. Yeah. She cooked with uh, with my mom, with some friends. She also got commercial kitchen exposure. She ate at a lot of good restaurants. So you know, so just to gain that. So she came back and then we uh, started talking about uh, how, how will we put that into, uh, into action. 
and the most feasible at that time, the, like f for us, that made sense was to make to have a food truck. See how people respond. One thing that she had to have uh, on on that food truck was a wood burning oven. A wood oven on a food truck that was sure to raise questions. So she said, "I'm going to do a wood burning oven," and I said, "Edo, come here." I sit down and talk to him, and I told him, "Hey, this woman is crazy." <laughs> She's going to burn you while you are driving from point to point. <laughs> she did not let us mess her up. She did right. She went in Sarajevo. She, she went from one place to another to learn from different cooks. There is always small things that they can make food better. You know that. Yeah. So she gets right thing. And look at her. Yeah. Look at them. They're standing in line outside. Yeah. 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 The success of the food truck has grown into a stable of the Wester Grove community, proving that the influence of the Boston culture in Bevo has reached well beyond its Sibyl and into other parts of the city. This is my, starts to be my favorite time of day because our neighbors will like walk their dogs. <laughs> yeah. And so I think that was kind of the coolest thing that we learned. When you open a restaurant, you're not really just opening a business, like you really become part of the community. The influx of the Bosnian population when they were refugees here, you know, this whole other culinary scene was opening up down in Bevo Mill. So I just started checking out all the places that were opening up and I remember we'd go in and it was always felt so, it was just so foreign, but interesting and it felt cool. I worked in several different places, got myself into as many kitchens as I could. That was pretty much the whole purpose of going over there. They welcomed me with open arms and made it very easy on me. I got to cook with his mom a lot. I had never really left the country before. It really changed who I was, that trip. You know, in one dish that you decide to make, and maybe it's a flavor profile that they've never had before, and then they love it, and now they're curious. It's becoming American food. It's becoming something that is a staple in a household here, and changing the platform of how that generation feels like, oh, this is food I grew up on. Once we decided to do this food, it was also like, wow, what if, what if people don't come? Like, what if they don't take to it? What if they don't like it? We didn't have the capital to have a restaurant. St. Louis was in a spot where food trucks, they were hot, you know. Uh, Dave Choi of Soul Taco kind of started something, like a little phenomenon here. Then, you know, the Gorilla Guys and all this ethnic food, nobody would come to the truck. They all thought it was so foreign and they didn't understand the word. The day we sold 30 items, like, I think I got ch like choked up and I was like, oh my God, like people are like little by little, like we're gaining people's trust and they're coming and they're eating and they like it and they're telling their friends and then all of a sudden you stand there and the customers are explaining the food to other customers yeah. and you don't you don't talk anymore yeah and that was re really remarkable i see uh, when i was here the first time you had a line outside the door it's been consistent around here knock on wood it's it's something that's still every day when it happens, it's still shocking. I still wake up and I say, are people gonna come? <laughs> when the food comes out fast, as soon as you order, we get you a seat. I think that's kind of one of the secrets to setting people's minds at ease. That's actually part of our system. So you always work good together or do sometimes you have a little? Of course, we have a little, of course, every so often. Like everybody else? Yeah. yeah. What, do you, what do you think? <laughs> we have a rule that, you know, my wife is in the front of the house and I'm in the back of the house and not to step on each other's toes. It's a good rule. <laughs> I'm the only one who honors that. <laughs> if we love the bread, everything else will fall into place, you know? It's really, it's really the heart and soul of what we do. Who couldn't love this bread? Lauren has clearly figured out the delicate art of wood oven baking. By now, they have been making breads for more than six hours. Meats have been cooking on spits, fresh ingredients have been prepped in the back, and a crowd has started growing outside the door. It's showtime. This is my chance to finally see what all the bus is about. Wow. So yeah, this is our full menu. But you can modify all of these. So that's how you eat it like this, just? Yep. Okay. Very simple. Simple in ingredients and um, it's cooked over wood. You cannot beat that. That's delicious. It, it's really a humble cuisine because mm -hmm. it's so simple. The simples seems to be the big winners. So this is a, it's called Pleskavica. It's like a Balkan burger. Okay. 
This one is stuffed with cheese, so when you cut into it, the, sh uh, the cheese should ooze out. It's oozing out. Is it? Right. Yeah, look at that. You don't what's want to get messy because of the camera, right? What, what, <laughs> what's the red sauce? <laughs> Ivar. Ivar is um, roasted red pepper, uh, eggplant, a little bit garlic. It's very popular in Serbia and Macedonia. That's great. There was nothing like overpowering spicy at all in the food. And they asked me what it is. Uh, I tell them it's nothing unusual, you know. Yeah, it's such a great combination of flavor, and it's so fresh. So we have a eggplant sandwich. It's very popular with uh, vegetarians. As you can see, we use our bread though, for everything. That's oh, what we, we stood and made this morning. Yeah, you helped me do it. Yeah. You did well. You <laughs> well, did thank well. You. <laughs> thank you. You are a master. So what do you think of it? It's it's awesome. Lauren, she's meticulous. She takes a lot of pride into creating these recipes to make them uh, ours. Well, that's what brings us together, It's the food. That's why food is love. <laughs> My grandma always told me not to leave empty, not to leave anything on the plate. <laughs> well, I got a lot of work to do over here. <laughs> After trying everything on the menu and putting in nearly eight hours at the treat box, I'm leaving to let them tend Thank to the so masses. Thank you. But as night falls, I find myself back on the streets of Webster Grove, this time on my way to a family dinner of more traditional Balkan food Lauren has prepared at her home. So this is the uh, bread from the restaurant, uh, Somon. Somon, okay. Uh, Tetka, this is, what did you make here? Cucumber salad. salad. It's kind of like, salad. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a Shosopska salad, mm -hmm. a version of that. Okay. Um, this is a uh, Tarhana uh, style of soup. So basically, Edo's mom and dad took tomatoes and fermented them and dried them, mixed them with flour, and made these little tiny little dumplings that um, cook up like pasta, and, and it's just really, uh, the texture. It's fun to eat. It's fun to eat. Okay, and you said this is the first time you made it? This is the first time I've made this. So oh, wow. this has been, they brought the Tarhana two visits ago, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been in my freezer. I've been saving it for a special occasion, so. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, here we have Sarma. Uh, so this is a red cabbage. I mean, you'll see it mostly with green, but because I, I had it on hand. Okay. Yeah, this is what we do. This is a cabbage, cabbage salad, salad. kupas. So this is just simple vinegar, salt, pepper, cabbage. Uh -huh. This is a zelenitsa. So this is a t style of pitta that is very traditional everywhere through the Balkans. Uh, this is a spinach and cheese. You can do potato, you can do burek, which is uh, beef and uh, onion usually. <laughs> it's beautiful, it looks great. So we have a, a wine, red wine from Croatia, and then this is Iran, which is like a yogurt drink. So yeah, all right. Let's, let's dig in, you guys. The the thing about uh, Bosnian cuisine is it, it's um, influenced from east and west. So yeah. we were part of the Ottoman Empire for a long, long time, and then the Austrian-Hungarian -Hung Empire took over. Yeah. They stayed for a bit. So it started with you trying to please your husband. That's why you did all this cooking. We've had a conversation where like a few women that I know, they end up marrying somebody from another culture mm -hmm. and then they're, you know, missing the food or there's nobody cooking it or, you know, whatever the case may be, you find yourself wanting to like make that yeah. for them. Maybe food is love. The food is love. This is right here. Uh, cheers to that. I, I feel the love. I feel the love right here. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Putting the menu together, I was just like, okay, well, why don't we do a combination of all the street foods that I kind of fell in love with, you know, during the, the, the trip. So between, like, Bosnian staples and then things from other places, you know putting that menu, that small, tight little menu together. And I knew that if we were gonna do it, and it was gonna be me making this food and putting it out there for the masses and the way that we did, it, it had to be right. When I visited first time in 2011, 
I was amazed by the lack of Bosnian cuisine and that you know what you could get it was way different than the stuff that I'm used to you know from from back home and it's it's crazy to me that it took you know Lauren here who's American to to create something so authentic that it tastes like back home I also talked to a lot of people and they agree with you know she replicated the authentic stuff that we have at home I'm glad that you know she did it and makes us feel more at home here you know? yeah I mean and it, it, so she got the stamp of approval <laughs> from the Bosnian community that was pretty important I'd say but yeah now she's there you know like now she can sell it back in Bosnia too I think you know <laughs> so the soup is that a, a side dish or we don't like eat that first like you normally do or? um you have to have this yeah something broth okay this is good for digestion there's something about like walking through the streets and smelling the wood and sm it just it's intoxicating and it's yeah. something that you don't forget this one is romashice is the butter sour cream coconut oil sugar and eggs it's kind of like a shortbread cookie, yeah. but yeah, so I, yeah. a lot of the desserts there, you know, are all, they're using a sugar syrup, obviously, to, because of when they were created, it was a way of preserving things. Yeah. So most of the desserts there you'll see are like saturated in this like sweet syrup. Um, so really this is a shortbread cookie, so it's gonna be really familiar for you to taste. And we have baklava, and here I just did some, um, almond stuffed dates and there's uh, they're just dipped in chocolate yeah just dipped in chocolate just dipped in chocolate, dipped in chocolate. Yeah. Dipped. don't worry about it <laughs> and then you have some cinnamon and rose and mint tea the tea is so good too uh, somebody from a culture like something happens a war and they immigrate to a city and they're trying to figure out how to find work and it's hard to find work and you know they're trying to figure out how to work for themselves and and make a life for themselves and part of and then also trying to make everyone else within that community feel at home yeah. so somebody always steps up and opens a restaurant it really feeds the community it's the heart and soul of those communities almost 20 years later now it's becoming something where this is becoming an american staple because they are now americans and they are citizens of this country and they're they're providing this food to communities that aren't just Bosnian, they're American, they're, you know, maybe they're Latinas, they're Latinos, they're Spanish, maybe they're Italian, yeah. Irish, German, you know, Indian. and then all Indian, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're like, I love this dish, like, I'm gonna look up the recipe, and then they make it, and then their kids grow up on it, yeah. and that's what, that's how we make American food, that's yeah. what American food is. You know, you, little by little, you become part of the culture. But you know, you can really feel the hospitality when you come to your restaurant. You feel so welcomed by everybody there. That's great. I, I, I mean, that, that, that I, I sensed that right away when I came there. And I mean, the same thing today. You come in here and everybody is, you know, I feel the love. <laughs> You're and, not and, a part of the family. And You're thank stuck. you very much. <laughs> You're stuck with Thank this. you very much. I mean, it, it, it's been it's such a rough. pleasure. Uh, you guys are great people. You're going to do great. Thank you. Thank you. Make me, like, see you on TV next time. <laughs> like. My experience here has been all about relationships. The relationship between a husband and a wife, oven and the bread, a city and its people. A lot of us who came here with uh, barely anything to achieve something, to build something, it, it takes a lot of hard work. Bosnian people are hardworking people everywhere. See him, me. That's what makes the United States so great, is that it's not just like what we talk about is American food. Like, to me, this is American food. The way a city has assimilated to a new culture. Love your food. <laughs> and the new culture in turn enriches the city. This is a good example of how food can comfort us and in its own way, help heal a small part of something that is missing. Call me romantic. <laughs> yeah. But I think there is something to be said about the love between Ido and Lauren. A love that they poured into a wood 
burning oven. An oven that has introduced a city to its own Bosnian culture and helped bring a taste of Balkan heritage to both those who never had it and those who had to leave it behind. Food is love. What I've seen here only proves my belief. I'm eager to get back into my own kitchen to put my spin on a few new things that I've learned. So the inspiration here, I drew some influences from my time at the Balkan Treat Box, mixed it with a little bit of my heritage, a Scandinavian influence here with some smoked salmon on top of pide with the Kaimak cheese on it. There is a relish, cucumber, capers, ground black pepper, and fresh chives. One Bosnian smoked salmon going out. Food is love. Go cook for somebody. What do you say for skull? In Denmark, it's skull. Shivili. Shivili. Shivili.